In the modern Labour Party, palling around with genocidal politicians is celebrated, while calling out genocides gets you kicked out. The latest development in this grim tale involves the left-wing MP Kate Ossimore. Her very serious crime was sending out this email to local Labour members on Holocaust Memorial Day. So it said, Tomorrow is Holocaust Memorial Day, an international day to remember the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, the millions of others murdered under Nazi persecution of other groups, and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and now Gaza. All right? Now, she is sending this the day after the ICJ ruled that there is a plausible case that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. It's the argument that was put forward by South Africa in that case, and it's the argument that the ICJ said was credible, was plausible. Lots of people weren't very happy about this. So clearly, some complaints were made to Kate Ossimore, and in the end, um, she apologized. So she tweeted this, Holocaust Memorial Day is a day to remember the 6 million Jews killed in the Holocaust and the genocides that have occurred since. I apologize for any offense caused by my reference to the ongoing humanitarian disaster in Gaza as part of that period of remembrance. Yes, apparently, we are only allowed to refer to the genocidal war on Gaza as a humanitarian crisis, as if the 26,000 deaths and risk of famine were caused by extreme weather or an earthquake, right? It's always the passive voice. In any case, that apology wasn't enough for some. The Jewish labor movement released this statement. This week, we've been commemorating the murder of 6 million Jews in the Holocaust and those who perished in subsequent genocides. Sadly, Kate Ossimore MP used Holocaust Memorial Day to make an inappropriate and offensive comparison to the war in Gaza. Her subsequent non-apology rang hollow. I'm not sure why this is a non-apology. These days, we know the Labour Party is better than this. We join others, including her own CLP, in calling on Labour to suspend her while they investigate. Right, so saying... I mean, I don't think she needed to apologize in the first place, right? It's a credible case um, that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. I think it's actually more important to speak about present genocides than past ones because you can actually change the outcome there, right? This, to me, seems like a reasonable email to send to Labour members. Um, however, the Jewish Labour movement didn't like it. Other right-wing MPs didn't like it. And within 24 hours, Kate Ossimore was gone, suspended. The whip was taken from her. She joins um, Andy McDonald, who was suspended last year for saying, quote, we will not rest until we have justice, until all people, Israelis and Palestinians between the river and the sea, can live in peaceful liberty. Right? I, I still think Andy McDonald's suspension was even more bizarre than this. That's, that's the most anodyne thing you can possibly say um, about Israel-Palestine. Uh, Miss Rahman, a left-wing member of Labour's NEC, has pointed out that the Labour Party appears to have a double standard when it comes to allegations of anti-Semitism. This is what Mish tweeted. There are clear double standards in how Labour treats the cases of Steve Reed and Barry to that of Diane Abbott and Kate Ossimore. Like Steve, Kate too apologised and deleted swiftly, but Kate got suspended and Steve not. I wonder what the difference is. Now, many have interpreted the difference to be based on, on race and gender, right? So the, the two people he cited that weren't suspended were two white guys, the two people he cited that were suspended were two black women. Now, that's, of course, possible. I actually think it probably has more to do with politics. Now, this is from a BBC report on the Barry Shearman case. Um, so this is back in 2020. Huddersfield MP apologises for alleged anti-Semitic tweet. Um, and his tweet was genuinely very anti-Semitic, right? So um, they write this. Barry Shearman tweeted about a run on silver shekels in an apparent reference to a rumor about two high-profile Jewish businessmen missing out on peerages. Now, you don't really talk about shekels, you know, in a, in a non-anti-Semitic way. Um, as for Shearman's defense, after deleting the tweet about silver shekels, he tweeted this, I have fought anti-Semitism all my political life and have been a Labour friend of Israel since joining as a student at the LSC. I am deeply sorry that my clumsy tweet has caused offence. The key part of that statement, I think, I have been a Labour friend of Israel. I'm the kind of guy who's anti-Semitism you shouldn't mind. Ash, this to me, you know, again, this is in the context of the ICJ's historic ruling on Friday, is just phenomenal, right? This is, however, where it was always going to go. And that's not because Kate Ossimore did anything particularly egregious. If we say that Holocaust Memorial Day is to remember the Holocaust and subsequent genocides, and the ICJ has said there is a plausible case here that Israel is committing genocidal acts, there is nothing inappropriate 
about making references to Gaza during Holocaust Memorial Day. I mean, I even think that even if the ICJ hadn't uh, made a provisional ruling saying that the case of genocidal acts was plausible, it would still be appropriate. I think that it would still be appropriate to make references to any, you know, huge loss of human life anywhere in the world, because I think that that's a natural thing to do. You reflect on the Holocaust. I think you would also reflect on other horrors of war. Of war. But you're right to say that this is entirely political. And for me, this is entirely what the IHRA definition of anti Semitism, which was adopted by the Labour Party in 2021 under intense pressure because of the anti Semitism scandals and how it played out in the media, this is always what it intended to do. Um, seven out of the 11 examples of anti Semitism, as defined in the IHRA document, concern how people talk about the state of Israel. So it wasn't a definition where most of it was about the way in which anti-Semitic tropes are wielded against Jewish people. It had an overwhelming preoccupation with how people discuss Israel. One of those examples was about comparisons between the Holocaust or Nazi Germany and Israel or anything to do with Jewish people. Now, these aren't comparisons that I think anyone should make lightly. These aren't comparisons that I think anyone should make because they're wishing to taunt Jewish people with their greatest trauma, you know, the, the, the most egregious historical wrong ever committed against them. But to say that you can never make any form of comparison between a settler colonial state which practices apartheid, which practices ethnic cleansing, which is, by many people's opinion, including uh, the state of South Africa, waging a genocidal war against the people of Gaza, to say that you can never draw any parallels between that and fascist Germany, to me, is purely about controlling discourse and trying to make Israel a special case, where the special case goes, well, we were formed out of the horrors of 1930s and 1940s Europe. Therefore, we can never be held to the same standards of international law which grew out of that horror. Right, We're exempt from it because of what we have experienced as a people. I don't think that anyone really agrees with that. When you put it like that, when you say, well, because of the history of anti-Semitism in Europe, because of the history of the Holocaust in the 1930s and 40s, it means that you can never draw parallels between that and what is being done to the Palestinians. I think most reasonable people would say, no, that's that's unfair. That's sort of stacking the deck in Israel's favour. But that's precisely what the IHRA bakes into the Labour Party. Now, the IHRA is very, very selectively implemented. There have been countless occasions where people have, for instance, treated Jewish people in the diaspora as interchangeable with the state of Israel, just most of the time they're doing that, they're doing that in support of the state of Israel. The IHRA definition of anti-Semitism is never wheeled out to demand consequences for those people. It is a document which facilitates the selective policing of language in the interests of the Israeli state and Israeli state ideology. And this is exactly what it was intended to do. So I feel for Kate Osimo. I see why she was forced to apologize. I don't I don't think she should have, quite frankly. But this was always going to be what the IHRA was used for inside the Labour Party. I just think there's also sort of another important thing to mention here, which is she isn't really comparing what's happening in Gaza to the Holocaust, right? She said the millions of other people murdered under Nazi persecution of other groups and more and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and now Gaza. Right. So she's not saying oh, this, this, this is a day to remember the Holocaust and to remember what's going on in Gaza. It doesn't seem like she's trying to taunt anyone, right? She's, there's a list of other genocides that have happened since 1945. You know, that's also in the official documentation um, from sort of the Holocaust Memorial Trust and the, the Holocaust Memorial Day Society or what it's called. Um, and she's added Gaza, which, you know, as we've said, the South African government thinks is a genocide and the International Court of Justice has said it's very plausibly a genocide. 
this doesn't even seem to fall into that category of potentially taunting. Right? This is just a very reasonable listing that with these other genocides. I think also I've sort of read that you know the number of people killed in in, in Gaza so far is about the the same amount of the people who were killed in Bosnia during the entire um, you know Bosnian genocide. Right. So it, we're not talking about things that are of a completely different scale here. Just seems vindictive. Also, I do think you know the fact that she you know she's apologized and then. You have the Jewish labor movement saying apologies are not enough. She has to be suspended. It's just, just seems, I don't know. It seems not good to me, right? It seems really, really not good. Um, and I, I think for sort of community relations, it's also quite bad, right? I don't necessarily agree with Mish Rahman that sort of this is happening because um, Kate Osamore is a black woman. It also happened um, to um, Andy McDonald, of course, getting suspended for saying something that was not at all anti-Semitic. But clearly, um, what's going on in Israel-Palestine is something which does motivate different communities in, in Britain and people have very strong opinions about. And if the Jewish labor movement can just get someone kicked out of the labor party for saying that what's happening in Gaza is a, is a genocide, I think that's not at all healthy.